Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to take you through some things I've learned about how to use epoxy resin with some 3D printing techniques. This is what I affectionately call the bug blocker. Um, don't mind that odd buzz off my thumb. Wasn't worth taking time to fix that. So um, I'm going to take you through the process of adding epoxy and color to your 3D prints and um, hope you learned something. All right, so we're going to start with some five minute quick cure epoxy resin and hardener. I got these from Hobby Lobby. I don't know, 10, 12 bucks, something like that. The idea is you spread out an equal amount of resin and hardener. Um, and the the, uh, the ratios do matter. You'll, you'll see when you start playing with this stuff that it does matter. Um, so then I start putting in some coloring, some yellow and some green pigment that again from Hobby Lobby, five bucks, something like that. And the key is to, along with getting the ratios right, mix, mix, mix very thoroughly before you start using it. But again, it is five, five minute epoxy, so time is important. Um, so here you see I have a, a, a bug blocker with a little beer bottle design in it. Um, and really the, the goal is to fill it up as quick as you can. Try not to introduce air bubbles if possible. Another tip is to don't overlap your design too much because it is a pain to sand it down and get things cleaned up. So the more you can keep the resin inside the, the opening, the easier it will be when it's time to sand it and clean it up. So, um, And then what I do is I, I tap it to get rid of the air bubbles and try not to get resin on your tools, but tap, tap, tap brings those air bubbles to the, uh, to the top of the design. And I'll just fast forward through the uh, the rest of these. You'll see that the same technique is used throughout, really. And since this is kind of a boring section in the, uh, the video, um, I'd really appreciate it if you liked, subscribed, shared, commented, what do I do right? What do I do wrong here? Help me learn uh, at the same time I'm trying to help others learn. All right, once everything's filled, it's time to try to get rid of more air bubbles as well as speed up the curing time. So I just use a regular old heat gun, um, a stripper, and uh, slowly go over it not to go too crazy and, and melt your 3D print at the same time. Uh, depending on how well I mix the resin, I might do this multiple times. So this is the next morning um, after a few runs with the heat gun and just sitting overnight. And I test it by you know, using my thumbnail, see if I can put a dent in. And you can see that this still is a little bit soft on the top, but for my purposes, it's probably good enough to take it to the next step. And that next step is sanding. Um, this is how I started doing these and uh, learned real quick, don't, don't be dumb. I built a jig so you get your fingers off the sandpaper and theoretically hold it a little bit flatter um, so you're not digging at the plastic so much, but you're getting the resin sanded down. And again, this is the, the way I started doing this and you'll see I, I changed tactics because it just takes forever to get through that top layer of resin. Um, so this is obviously sped up and still not really getting enough cut down to make it worthwhile. So this is what it looks like after I take a Dremel to it and sand that top kind of puffy area off and then come back with my jig and I hand sand on the rougher sandpaper obviously to, to really flatten it out Make sure that the, the resin's as flat as I can get it a, at the same level as the plastic. Um, you see, it's not an exact science by any means, just like any sanding. Uh, but then I, uh, after a little bit of kind of the heavier sanding and getting rid of the, the deep parts and pieces, then it's time to, to shift over to a much finer grit of sandpaper. So here's my significantly finer sandpaper. And it's just like any sanding process, it just takes time. 
add a little water here and there to, to really see where the imperfections are. Um, and sometimes when I want to, want to really make it shine, I'll, uh, I'll add some buffing compound or polish and really get rid of those imperfections and really make it shine. But for today's purpose, I'm not going to go to that level. Just get the sanding done. This looks pretty good. There's still a little bit of imperfections on there, but um, again, for for my purposes today, I'm really not looking to be perfect. Just to show the uh, show the process of how it works, and water helps find all those little glitches that you want to dig at. And here's a couple of decent examples of uh, finished product look pretty good and uh, I do put a little magnet uh, in the bottom of them so you can stick them on a fridge or wherever so nice easy way to keep track of stuff and now to test surely all it is keeps the bugs out of your bottled beer and the design that I created fits pretty much every beer bottle I've ever had so hope you learned something and thanks for watching Oh, and don't forget, if you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you.